Our next speaker is Dr. Sandhil Kumaran. And uh, again, it is, uh, I think, needless. Uh, Dr. Sandhil is a renowned worker in the field of vitiligo and is a professor of PJ Chandigarh and special interest in vitiligo pigmentary disorder and articaria. Huge number of articles in all the leading journals all over the globe. And today he will speak on immunosuppressive therapy in vitiligo and update. Dr. Sandhil, please. Thank you, sir, for this kind introduction. Good afternoon, everybody. At the outset, I would like to thank Dr. Prasad and give me an opportunity to present in front of this august audience. So the pertinent topic given to me is immunosuppressive therapy in vitiligo and update. I have no conflicts of interest to disclose, and we all know that patients with pigmented disorders are often perceived different from the rest of the society, resulting in great psychosocial stress. So, vitiligo is a common disorder of acquired hypo, hypo or depigmentation with a prevalence rate of 3 to 4 percent in India, and the worldwide it's up to 2 percent, characterized by selective loss of melanocytes, clinically present as circumcised non scaly milk white uh, micropatch lesions, and in recent years, especially past 20 years, there has been considerable progress has been made in the understanding of the basic pathogenesis of vitiligo. So and now we know it's clearly an autoimmune disease. The previous speakers have already spoken over it. And vitiligo is often dismissed as a cosmetic problem. Although its effects can be psychologically devastating, often with a considerable burden on the daily life. So I will not go much into the detail of this slide. It's a very interesting paper which was published by John Harris in uh, Frontiers of Immunology. People who want to be interested in reading can read. It's a very nice article. So we all know the first three is not supported nowadays. It is the lower three which is more supported in pathogenesis, more so in a per person who is genetically predisposed to develop vitiligo. This is the latest uh, classification of vitiligo as per the British Association of Guidelines come, uh, published in 2022. Vitiligo is classified as non-segmental, segmental and undetermined variety. And as far as uh, uh, the disease stability is concerned, stable, progressive and regressive. There is a talk on the stability of disease per se, probably they'll cover on that. So I'll be trying to deal with only the systemic immunosuppressive treatments which have been used in the treatment of vitiligo per se. What are the updates in it? So the uh, selection of this will depend on the disease stability, extent of the disease, treatment cost, accessibility of the uh, treatment to the patient, and responsiveness to the previous therapies. So coming to the first one, systemic corticosteroids, although this is the oldest therapy, not as old as the phototherapy which was initially talked about. So we know it acts by suppressing the immune uh, response by regulating T cell function and migration, hence stabilizes the disease, hence the T is used in the rapidly progressive vitiligo, and it also induces uh, re-pigmentation by controlling the disease. So pulse therapy is day preferred compared to the daily steroids in order to prevent its potential side effects. The doses which are preferred here are 5 mg of betamethasone or 2.5 mg of dexamethasone which are given in two consecutive days repeated at week intervals. So coming to the studies which have been uh, published, so one of the largest study which was published was from a department wherein we studied the effect of OMP dexamethasone on 444 patients. So what did we conclude? The arrest of pigmentation was in up to 91% of the patient by end of 14 weeks. Some amount of repigmentation was found in all patients by end of 16 to 20 weeks and adverse events was found only in 9.2% of the patients. So what is the recent update? The recent update is this uh, review, systematic review, which was published in an International Journal of Dermatology by Sonia et al. What did they conclude? They compared the OMP with that of the other uh, uh, the immunosuppressant agent, which was co compared with the, uh, the, study, the studies comparing those things. And they reviewed 555 articles which was published in literature and they found only four articles which was, which fulfilled their criteria for analysis. The first one is already told by Dr. Kaitan, it was from uh, Ames. The other two are from PGI, another one is by Carr et al. from uh, Delhi. So here we see the red box, so the arrest of pigmentation by OMP and its uh, other uh, counterpart, the immunosuppressive, was more or less similar. Hence, the authors concluded that it, OMP has no additional value in repigmentation or arrest of progression compared to azathioprine, methotrexate, minocycline, and POVA. It is actually the contrary. Whenever a patient is unable or not suitable for steroids, you can take these things because they give the similar sort of outcome as that of OMP because OMP is the gold standard nowadays. 
Coming to azathioprine, it is a mechanism action we all know. I'll not go into the details of this. So what does the literature say? The literature says, apart from whatever Dr. Paketan has said, these are the two studies. One was way back in 2006, uh, where they compared azathioprine with POVA and with another group had only POVA. So they concluded that azathioprine may potentiate the repigmentary effect because the combination group gave a better outcome compared to the only POVA group. Another one was recently by two, in 2019 by Madhakar et al. What they say, seen was the azathioprine, they compared uh, betamethasone OMP with that of azathioprine and they said azathioprine and betamethasone uh, pulse therapy gave an equally effective treatment in vitiligo. So this is what I was saying and uh, this is actually our uh, patients, I think. We have our data, we have not yet uh, published this. This was the uh, repigmentation, spontaneous repigmentation in our patient after six months of azathioprine. Cyclosporin, it's also another uh, friendly immunosuppressant. Uh, uh, we all know the mechanism of action. It inhibits calcineurin by forming this uh, complex with cyclophilin. It reduces the transcription of interleukin-2, a cytokine which is responsible in activation of both CD4 and CD8 T cells. And we know CD8 T cells is the primary uh, game player in vitiligo. And we, uh, the, in the world literature, we've seen there are only two studies which have put. One was conducted in our own department, which was a uh, thesis of Dr. Hitashi, she studied two groups, uh, compared uh, OMP with cyclosporin, that is 2.5 mg dexamethasone with cyclosporin low dose 3 mg per kg body weight, given for a four month period. And what did she see? She saw that the arrest of disease pigmentation was attained in 21 patients in group 1, that is OMP group and 22 in uh, cyclosporin group. But the cyclosporin sh uh, group showed a faster achievement of the uh, arrest of disease pigmentation, earlier achievement. And whereas the other parameters, that is extent of repigmentation, improvement in patient assessment score, and et cetera, both were comparable in both groups. So this is the spontaneous repairment in one of our patients at the end of six months of follow-up. The only other study which uh, in the world literature which has studied cyclosporin was by Taneja et al., where they, say, they saw that the cyclosporin was not only able to halt the disease progression, but also induce repigmentation, something similar to our findings. Methotrexate, also called as the poor man's immunosuppressant. I not, uh, think the, what does the world literature say? The older study was in the Saudi Journal. They see a studied a pilot study in six patients and they showed that the clinical and photographic assessment revealed no change in their vitiligation. But further studies by Garcia et al. as a thing, uh, they showed their significant pigmentation in one of the cases. The latest one was by Alana. They studied methotrexate low dose, 10 milligram given weekly along with the narrowband UB compared to narrowband UB alone. And they also, they used here the vitiligo extent score, the new scoring system which has come to study the extent of vitiligo. And they show, uh, concluded that the low dose methotrexate has a positive effect on stabilization of vitiligo, favors the drug tolerance, prevents the development of side effects, allowing the long-term effect on pathogenetic mechanisms. So we also con uh, conducted a study by uh, Arshima Ratal, they uh, did the study, and they also found that both the uh, OMP as well as the methotrexate had equal outcomes. MMF, a very under-tried uh, immunosuppressant in um, uh, vitiligo, uh, it can be given up to 2 grams per day. We did a pilot study in our patients. It was given 1 gram twice daily as compared to dexamethasone. And the arrest of disease activity was achieved in 80% with the OMP group and 72% in the uh, mycophenolate group. And only two patients on MMF group was uh, discontinued because of leukopenia and transaminitis respectively. And we published this in uh, Archives of Dermatological Research. So this is the pre and post treatment photograph which shows that there was disease Arrest in the I think disease stability was achieved and very, very minimal repigmentation. Cyclophosphamide, only one study is there in the world literature, but anyway, it is not recommended because of its toxicity. The latest kit in the block, the JAK start, the other day, the how the JAK works, actually probably there are further talks on JAK inhibitors. I will not go take a part of their presentation also. So what are the studies available? Initially, it was only case reports and retrospective studies which showed a partial improvement, but later, this was the review by Key et al., which was published in Frontiers of Immunology. They showed that ruloxetinib, uh, ruxolatinib uh, uh, by John Harris, uh, they showed that 51% of the facial pigmentation compared to 0.8% at baseline. The tofacitinib study showed that most of the repigmentation occurred in the photo-exposed areas, as well as topical tofacitinib had the same uh, similar outcome. And baricitinib recently, which is the FDA approved in treatment of vitiligo, they also showed a good outcome 
or almost complete repigmentation of the hands and forearms. So basically, wherever more sun exposure is there. These are the few more uh, uh, small molecules, jackstart inhibitors, which are in a trial process, not yet come out. So I just to complete, there are other few immunomodulators also, minocycline, which acts as an antioxidant, has been shown by one of the study from our department itself to have equal efficacy of that to OMP. Eprimolast, it has, uh, the outcome is not very, I think the results in the literature does not show a positive outcome or a negative outcome. One more, lenalidomide, which is the friend of thalidomide, which is still in the mouse studies and is shown to improve the, uh, decrease the amount of new lesion coming. And this is the US FDA categories. Now when you see all the more, most of our immunosuppressants are in the C and D category. Conclusion, immunosuppressive therapies may benefit patients with unstable, widespread or recalcitrant vitiligo. However, it is important to recognize their limitations as some agents lack evidence to support their use with wide variability to in outcome measures. These treatments can also be associated with poor efficacy and side effects and additional barriers include adherence to the treatment by the patient and the need of regulatory laboratory monitoring as well as the appointments to be given to the patient. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sandil. Uh, any questions? We can have one or two questions. Yes, please. Uh, can we have the mic there at the back? Thank you for your excellent uh, presentation. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, just I have a question yeah. uh, about uh, the use of azathioprine with the POVA. Uh, the British Association of Dermatologists uh, guidelines said that uh, we have, uh, so uh, we shouldn't use uh, azathioprine with POVA because the, this potentiates the carcinogenic effect of POVA. Yes. What's your opinion about that? See, the problem is more with type 1, type 2, and type 3 surface skins, especially phototherapy. I had one of my, a few of my classmates itself who were there in Germany and UK. They wouldn't want to start the, them on POA itself, phototherapy itself, because they are more worried about melanoma formation. But when we come to our skin, our skin is more or less a toughened skin like. So the onset of the secondary malignancy is slightly lesser. Although, so we can okay. combine both of them. Thank you. In our skin yeah. especially. Yeah, we have another question. Yeah, wonderful talk, uh, doctor. Thank you. Uh, just wanted to check with you in your experience, uh, what are the chances of disease recurrence once you stop immunosuppressive treatments? See, uh, most of the uh, projects which we have done in our department is of the follow up period for at least four months post treatment. So the relapse rate was very, very minimal compared to the baseline per se. But of course, if you want a long term, that is up to a year or something, that data we are not yet carrying. Like, we are given a treatment up to six months and followed the patient for an additional four months. So later than that, we don't have a follow up to say like, probably the, the disease do come back, that's how the disease nature is. Sure, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, to answer the question on the malignancy, the non-melanoma skin cancer, I think the latest uh, pathogenesis is that the P53 sub tumor suppressor protein is highly expressed in vitiligo and that is why they are protected from non-melanoma skin cancers. Yeah. So I think that would answer the question on poor induced malignancies. Yes. Yeah. And Dr. Sendil, any idea about uh, alpha melanotide? Have you? See, alpha melanotide, we have not tried, we don't have it over here, but anyway, that was not as a immunosuppressive therapy, so that's why I didn't add it into my talk. Right? Thank you, Dr. Sendil. Uh, I think we'll have to move on to the next talk. Thank, Thank you so very much. much.